Choosing the right door can be pretty hard, but we're on our way to figuring out how to make this door just about perfect for VR. If you haven't checked out part one, you can do so in the description below, but there's two things I want to iron out with this door right now. When you grab the door handle and you walk away from it, after a bit, the door starts freaking out. The next part is, well, kind of a personal preference. I'm going to set the door to animate to open or close once it's reached a certain threshold. Now, if you're following along from the last video, so we still have this door here and it has all these components on it, the hinge joint, the rigid body, box collider, and the grab interactable. And the thing that I want to change right now is I want to improve the grab interactable so it detaches after a certain amount of distance is met. So to do that, I've written a quick script. If you want to just download the script, I'll have it on my Patreon, but you can also just follow along here and I'll show you how I do it. So I made this called the distance release grab interactable and it's going to be mad because, well, we already have a grab interactable on here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and then I'm going to add the distance release grab interactable, open it up and tell you what's inside. So kicking off with this script, you can see here, this is the distance release grab interactable and we're inheriting from the XR grab interactable. Normally you inherit from mono behavior, but I don't want to inherit from mono behavior. I want to extend the functionality of the grab interactable. And I've done this in a very, very simplistic way. So first we have the max grab distance. So if this is ever, so if this is ever exceeded, then the hand will let go of it. And then we need to cache the interactor. So this is the grab interactable. What we're doing is we're overriding the on select entered and the on select exited functions. And what these do is first we want to make sure we call the base function of this, but then we also grab and cache the interactor. So this is going to be the left or right hand that's grabbing the handle. Of course, when the handle releases, we want to set this to null. We don't want to reference to it anymore. And again, you want to call the base of this. And in the update function, we check here if the cache is not null, then we measure the distance between what the current transform is and the first collider. So if you remember here, we actually use a collider, which we haven't set for this. So this would actually break the code. We need to put the door handle back here. And so what we're coming in, we're coming in and we're grabbing this first element here. And that is the object that we are determining the distance from the handle and our controller. All we do is we call distance, we measure the distance between these, and if it's greater than the max grab distance, then we call the interaction manager and select exit. And we will put in the cached interactor and then this current object, since this is the grab interactable. And I'll just mention that we also have a public function here that we're not quite using yet. We're gonna use it later. And all it does is just, if it's called, it releases the interactor that's holding onto the object. Now, before we boot things up, we wanna make sure things are wired back correctly here. So the interaction layer mask needs to be set to interactable and then we already set the collider here so that's good we don't need instantaneous we need velocity tracking and then we also don't care about the rotation here now one last thing i want to mention about this script is if you ever want to play with the max grab distance you can do so here this is where you can adjust it and see if it feels right i found 0.25 to be okay it still shakes a little bit so you might want to lower it and before you boot up it looks like i goofed up here this is actually the door object not the door handle so i'm gonna go ahead and put that there and get rid of this all right let's see this work and if i grab the door i can open it and if i walk away it's not freaking out if i grab the door handle from here you can see i'm moving it but if i walk away, it no longer freaks out and breaks off the door. So we fixed it. Now that the door handle's fixed, you know, there's still one issue I have with this door, and it's the fact that when the player pushes it open, it doesn't push open all the way all of the time. And we're going to fix that by adding in an animation and triggering that animation once the door has reached a certain threshold from when it was originally grabbed. Now, in order to animate this door, we are going to need an animator, an animation controller, and a few animation clips. And before we do any of that, you know what we really need is to fix this door in a certain way. So how it's structured right now is, well, I kind of goofed this up. This parent object's at negative 90, and I'm going to set this back to zero. And instead, I want the rotation to be on the door model itself. And the reason why we're changing this up is because we need to offset this a bit. So right now, if we rotate this, you'll see it just kind of rotates like that. That's not really how a door should open. And so what we need to do when we're animating it is we need it rotating on the parent object right here. So if we offset this, if we set this to 0.5 on the door model, and then if we set this to negative 0.5 on the parent, 
We can see now if I rotate the parent, it opens just like we expect the door to open. Now we need an animator to get this thing animating. And I'm gonna do it on the parent object because that's gonna be the one we're rotating. Just look at animator. And then we need an animation controller. So if I right click, go to create, and then animation controller. Now we need to make sure we're linking this up correctly. So I will go ahead and drag this here and let's open this up. So I double click that and that opened up the animator window. And currently right now it's not animating into anything because we have no animation clips. Now I wanna start the door off as closed. So I'm gonna come to the animation window here. And if you don't have that window, you just come over here. Window, animation, animator. All we need to do is create a new animation clip. So I'm gonna call this one closed. And you can see it's already made the connection here. In order to animate this closed, I'm gonna come back to this scene. I'm going to select the door object again where the animator's on, I'm gonna hit record. And the funny thing about this is it's not recording anything because we have to move this a little bit and then we just have to set it back to zero. Now it's recorded that, you can see it right here. So I'm gonna end that and now we have our closed animation. If we look at our animate, that's what it goes into as our default. Next we need a open animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create new clip. And just like before, make sure I'm selecting this. I'm gonna to go to the scene. We want it to start off as closed. So we wanna make sure we're recording that here. And then about one second in, I want it to be open. Let's try negative 100. Okay, and so if I stop the recording and if I press play just to test it out, you can see it's opening. Now, one thing I wanna make sure that I change here is the fact that these animations are still looping. So I'm gonna select one and the other and just turn off the loop on them. We also wanna come into the animator and make sure we set up our animations correctly. So what we're going to be doing is we need a transition and a transition there. So we need two transitions, one going to open, one going to closed. And what's gonna call this transition is actually a parameter that we need to enter. So I'm gonna create a parameter called is open. And actually I'm kind of breaking my own naming convention here. So I'm gonna change this to a lowercase i there. There we go. That's just me being a stickler for myself. Uh, but right, so if we come over here, we go to condition, is open is true, it'll go to the open animation. And if is open is false, it'll go to the closed animation. So our animator, controller, and our clips are all set. The last thing we need to do is connect it all with a script. And I've already made a script, believe it or not. If we come here, I've called it door controller based on movement. And that's a few things we need to enter here. But as I said before, as a movement threshold, which you know what, that's actually a little high. I'm going to lower that. Let's try 0.25. And I'm going to open up the script and tell you what's going on. Now I try to make this script as easy as possible. What we do is we take the game object door handle because that's the one we're tracking for distance and we also grab a distance release grab interactable, that script that we just made, and then the movement threshold. So this is gonna be the threshold. I'm gonna change this to 25 because I think I like it better as the default. And this threshold, if it's ever crossed, if the handle ever moves from its starting position to this threshold, it'll just open or close the door. We also need a reference to our animator. We need a reference to the starting position and then a true and false for both is the handle being grabbed and also if the door is opened or not. So on awake, I just have a bunch of checks here. If we don't set any of these things up in the inspector, then I just send a warning and just kind of exit out of this thing so it doesn't freak out. I also take the grab interactable and I subscribe to two different events, the select entered and the select exited. And of course on destroy, you want to make sure that you remove listeners, otherwise you might get funky behavior. Now these events are subscribing these functions right here, handle grabbed and handle released. And all these do is they come in here and they record the starting position if the handle is grabbed and then it sets it to true. If it's released, it just sets it to false. Finally, we have the update function and this is where all the magic happens. If the handle's grabbed, then we will calculate the distance of the current door handle position from the start position. If the distance is greater than the movement threshold and the door isn't opened, well, then we are going to detach the grab interactable. If you remember from the previous script, that's what we're calling here. So we're just releasing the handle. And then we come in here with the door animator set bool and we say, all right, animate the door and make it open. And then we set the door to open. Now, if the door is already open and it moves that distance, that threshold from the starting position of when we grabbed it, then it's going to close the door. And that's really the entire script. So if we come back to the editor, we wanna make sure we take the door handle 
and add it there. We make sure the grab interactable from the door object or model is there, and that's the movement threshold. Let's start up and see what we're working with. So if I come up, I can grab the handle and I swing it open a little bit, and it swings open on its own after that. I didn't fling that. If I come over here and I try to close it, once I reach the threshold, it slams it shut. And then that, that closing animation's a little fast, and we can change that if we like. And if you're finding the door animation just a little quick, you can always come in here and reduce the speed. And then, you know, the door opening, I'm maybe 0.75, and that'll slow the animation down. And so it won't be so uh, jarring. But that is it. That is my new improved door for VR. I hope I didn't over engineer this thing. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out or if I'm just crazy and overthought this problem. And to my Patreon subscribers, thank you as always. Without you, I can't do this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.